Hey friends, sorry I'm late. I was hopping off another call that I'm here now. i um, excited to have some folks hop on on a Saturday morning. And hey Jamie, hey Alyssa. Yes, Minuto. Great to have y'all. So, um, if you're just hopping on, or I guess we all just hopped on, um, today is a support flow. So what I'd like to invite us to do is to grab a blanket, maybe a few pillows. If you have yoga blocks or bolsters, um, you could grab some sofa cushions. I would say to try to have like three to four soft things. Um, if you have a yoga strap or a belt or a towel um, or an extra long sock, we can use that. Uh, but mostly grab some cushion, grab some pillows, um, maybe grab a few books. So I'll give us like a good five minutes for you to run and raid the living room couch <laughs> for cushions. Um, because we're basically going to do like a prop workshop today. We're going to figure out, um, we'll have a, a nice flow warm up, but, um, we'll be exploring how we can create some extremely supportive postures, um, to calm stress and anxiety, um, to activate our parasympathetic nervous system, um, to take us out of our trauma response, our trigger response, our stress response, and move us into a mode where our body can actively rest and digest. I don't know if any other folks have been experiencing, like, in the craziness and the chaos um, of this new reality, you know, like, my stomach's affected, my digestion's affected, um, my, my whole energetic flow has been affected, so... I thought it would be nice today, especially on a Saturday morning, for those of us who are, especially for those of us who are waking up live, but for anybody who joins this um, later as well, that it'd be nice to play with um, some ultimate relaxation um, postures and really look at how support can be a huge asset to us. Um, so if you're just hopping on, please grab some cushions, some pillows, um, maybe a blanket that you can roll up, maybe two blankets, um, and, uh, ah, blocks under the knees, yes. Um, so if you have some yoga blocks, a bolster, I'm going to give us another few minutes to go grab that, um, and we can get started, yeah. So cushions, blankets, yoga blocks, books, pillows, um, and I'm just going to get set up. Okay, so hopefully we all have some blankets, some cushions. Um, oh, where's my pink blanket? Here we go. I decided to get an extra blanket too. So hopefully you have, hopefully you have some cushions and some blankets. Um, let's ground in a breath. First and foremost, even if you don't really feel like you need it, um, putting some pillows under your knees um, can really give your hips a rest. Because even though it doesn't, it may not feel apparent. We 
do use our hips even when we sit crisscross applesauce. So um, just try it. Try tucking some pillows underneath. Give your hips a rest. Find a nice grounded seat. Lengthening the spine. Slowing the breath down. inhales, slow controlled exhales, seeing if we can stretch out the breath just a bit more. Inhaling to sit tall, feel the length coming from the top back of the head, exhaling to roll the shoulders back, shoulders heavy, chest open. Inhaling to lift the arms up, fingertips stretch wide, elbows stretch wide, shoulder blades stretch wide to open up the upper back, chest opens. Feeling just this length across the upper back and shoulders, shoulders resting in their sockets. And inhale, bringing the left arm down, right arm stretch, reach up and over. Exhale, deepen. Press that right knee into your pillow. Press the right hip into your pillow. If you're just joining us, um, I ask you to grab some cushions from your sofa, some pillows, a few blankets, um, any yoga blocks, yoga cushions that you have. We're going to explore support and props today. Reaching the left arm up and over to the other side, stretching the oblique. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, deepen, pressing the left hip down, pressing the left knee into that pillow. Having that pillow there so we can press into it gives us a little bit more space to practice strength in our hips to build healthy mobility. Bringing the left hand across the body, right hand behind us, inhale, lengthen, open the chest, open the shoulders, exhale, deepen to the right, chin turning to the right, big, slow, deep breaths, inhale, make space, exhale, take up that space, deepen the twist. reaching the arms up and over to the other side when you're ready. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. Feeling the chin turn to the left. We're having this twist in the lower spine, middle spine, upper spine, shoulders open, chest open. Inhale, expand in the midsection. Exhale, deepen the twist. Reaching the arms up and over. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up. Exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, release. Let's roll the shoulders open, open the chest, open the throat. If you're just joining us, I invite you to grab some pillows, some sofa cushions, a few blankets. We're gonna play with support today. 
we're really gonna explore some of my favorite, most relaxing, stress relieving, anxiety relieving postures. Bringing the fingertips to shoulders, drawing big circles with the elbows. And stretching the arms long. Big circles, leading with the pinky. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up. Exhale, release. So I really believe um, opening the outer shoulders, especially in all this work we're doing with the shoulders in our warm up, is a big restorative practice. Even if you're sitting at your desk, virtually teaching or virtually working, even just a moment to shoulder squeeze or a moment to open up the outer shoulders, taking that two minutes, and maybe we, we can set timers throughout the day to remind ourselves, like, take some tension out of your body. You don't need to do a whole yoga flow to practice yoga. We can take moments throughout the day to fold forward and lengthen the spine. We can take, you know, a sun salutation or even just three deep breaths sitting with a nice mindful posture. Um, so anyway, um, let's give ourselves a hug, stacking right elbow on top of left. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, shoulders, release. We can also hook this bottom arm underneath. We can also grab onto our fingers, our hands for a bind. This is a great way to relieve anxiety, to bring our stress levels down if we're feeling very energetic in our stress and we want to calm ourselves down, taking on this twist, or sorry, this bind can be really relieving. Inhale to lift, exhale, press the hands away from the forehead. Gently release. Giving ourselves a hug on the other side, left on top of right. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, feel the shoulders heavy. Maybe we take this arm underneath. Maybe we grab on. Since we're using props today, you can also take a strap or a sock and grab on. So even if you can't reach your hands, you can grab on um, to a piece of cloth or a sock. Um, inhaling to lengthen. Exhaling to press the hands away from the forehead to kind of open up like a lever tension in our upper back. One more breath. Gently release, open wide. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up. Exhale, release. Reaching the left fingertips away from us. Right arm comes up and over, flexing this left wrist. Um, finding length in the left middle finger, letting the right elbow just fall heavy. We're not, I'm not pulling very hard here, just letting the right elbow's natural weight fall heavy, flexing that left wrist a bit more, finding your sweet spot. Where does it feel the most juicy? Where do you find the most relief? Deep breaths here. The reason we're reaching so actively with this left hand is to engage and protect this left shoulder. Um, we don't want to strain or pull a muscle in this delicate neck muscles um, region, so flexing and reaching helps us protect. Engaging with our strength helps us protect um, our bodies, which is, is a powerful metaphor. Turning towards the right armpit, grabbing the top back of the head, maybe searching that left shoulder back. Gently release, left hand grabs the head, right arm stretch, reach, maybe flexing this right wrist, left elbows just feeling heavy. Keep reaching that right wrist away to engage the strength of our right shoulder, maybe flexing the right wrist a bit more, finding length in the right middle finger. Turning towards the left armpit, grabbing the top back of the head, 
maybe searching that right shoulder back. Gently release, roll the neck. Do what feels good for your neck, gently. You might notice that I do a really similar warm up every time. And part of that is I like kind of like ritual of it opening up, but I also believe this particular warm up is particularly good for stress relief, um, which is really how I enter into my physical practice and wanting to relieve stress and take tension out of my body. So I also like doing it as a yoga teacher, doing a really similar warm up because it helps us um, find more vocabulary to reference. So maybe it'll be easier for you to do the warm up on your own because we have that repetition for the first 15 minutes of our flow. Maybe um, there's something that always particularly resonates to you. And so it's nice that we, that we always come to it. And maybe you'll start to notice like, oh, I especially love those shoulder rolls. So maybe that's what I do when I'm at my desk during the day is like, I do my favorite um, poses to feel good. Uh, we don't always have to take on a challenge. A um, so if we put cushions under our knees, just noticing how it feels to have that support there for such a sustained amount of time. If you joined us late and you haven't gotten the message yet, we're using props today. So grab some pillows, some cushions, um, rip them off your sofa. Well, don't rip them off, but take, take them off your sofa um, and maybe grab one or two blankets. So we're going to move into just talking about some really restorative props that can release, um, relieve anxiety and stress. Um, and we essentially, when we put ourselves in, in particular postures um, and we use the support of props, um, the experience of our body, of our skin and our muscles resting on props, it, uh, it feels like a hug. And a hug um, gives us dopamine and is... Uh, essentially activates our parasympathetic nervous system. We improve blood flow. Our sex drive um, can be healthier. Um, our digestion can be healthier. When we go into that rest digest mode, it's like a toggle on and off. Either we're in crisis or we're in rest and digest and our organs are functioning properly. So, um, I'm no doctor, but <laughs> that's my best understanding to explain in the yoga practice. Um, so first what I'll do is we can grab one pillow or it could also be a yoga block or a stack of books and we're gonna create um, an incline for ourselves. So I created an incline, I put one pillow under the other um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring myself so that my right foot is, is right over my left thigh. Um, so my left leg is behind me, I'm turning to the right the cushion's on my right, it's right against my right hip. Um, and I'm gonna twist to rest on this bolster. Now, there's a few things we can do. So right here, see what makes you comfortable. Maybe we wanna hug our pillows. Maybe we wanna add more pillows. Um, some other things we can do to build more height in that incline is just to roll up a blanket. It doesn't even have to be neat. And you can add a little bit more incline there. And then, so this might be a great place for us. We're resting this left hip down. Our whole body is kind of able to rest into some supportive comfort. We can also turn our head to the right to deepen this twist so that our left ear is resting on the floor. This might be too intense for some of us right now, and that's okay. Uh, but it's an option if you want it, if it feels good. Working to relax the hips, letting the shoulders feel heavy. Trying not to do any work with our body, try to just let our body rest. Slow, deep, big breaths. I've 
personally think it's okay to let the mind wander if that's your intention. Um, if your intention is to cultivate focus or to clear your mind, I'll invite you to bring your attention to your breath. And anytime we find our mind drifting, we can just gently meet ourselves there and say, no worries, it's all good. We all get distracted. Let's focus on the breath now. And if you want to let your mind wander and drift, that's totally fine too. As long as we do so with intention. Pressing up. Let's do the other side. So we can lift the knees and we can really just turn to the other side so that our right knee is under our left foot. My right hip is on the ground. My left hip, or actually my right hip is lifted. My left hip is on the ground. I'm turning to my left. The bolsters against my left hip. I can rest my left ear on the floor or I can twist so that my right ear is on the floor or on the pillow. <laughs> Breathing deeply here. So you might notice this, this is kind of an intense twist. Um, so make the adjustments you need to feel comfortable. This is about comfort. It's not about work. Relieving stress is about, um, or in terms of our body, um, we can relieve stress by pushing ourselves and taking on a challenge and noticing what we're capable of. And we can relieve stress by just giving ourselves what we need, giving ourselves comfort, um, truly activating our nervous system to rest, feel cared for, feel supported. so that our body can function properly, so we can heal. And... Slow, deep breaths. When you're ready, press yourself up to a comfortable seat. <sighs> so that's a really nice um, twist. Um, twists are great for digestion, um, especially, and um, I particularly love that twist and doing so with the incline and the support just allows us to, to feel heavy and to, to deepen into that particular twist. Okay. So next up, um, let's do um, a squat with, with props and we'll kind of hold that for a moment to open up the hips. So for this, you might want to make a stock of pillows or maybe a stock of yoga blocks or a stock of books. Um, we're all going to have a different height comfort. Um, we can outwardly rotate the legs, which means we're not in parallel. Our toes are pointing out. Some of us might prefer to be wider. Some of us might prefer to be closer. Um, I just want to make sure that we pay attention to how our knees feel. I don't want our knees to feel any strain here. So let's find a distance that we want to try. Bend the knees, reach the hips back, and have a seat on your stack. Maybe you need to add more to your stack. Maybe you want to go a little bit deeper. You feel really comfortable going deeper. Um, making sure we can press the inner edges of our feet into the floor using our strength here. I like to press my elbows to the inside of my thighs, not to my knees, but to my thighs so that my elbows can press open and my knees can squeeze in. I'm lengthening the spine from the top back of the head, chest is open, shoulders open. I'll invite us to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, loud, slow, deep breaths.
making adjustments if we want more support underneath our hips maybe we want less we want to go a little bit deeper after some time here that's fine a few more slow deep breaths inhaling to feel expansion inflating in the midsection exhaling to deepen keep pressing all the edges of the feet into the floor slow the breath down make it bigger notice if you can feel your hips holding anything and see if you can let that go see if you can let the hips just release and rest on the supportive stack Continuing to breathe slow and deep. Of course, we could do this without blocks. We could hold ourselves up and it'd be really intense and it'd be a great strength and endurance workout. And that's great. What I'm inviting us to do here is to use props to just allow ourselves to sink in to rest. It's just a different experience for our nervous system. Both are good. It's great to do both. Um, it's great to have strong hips. And this practice here is just inviting us to feel supported, which is not easy. It's hard to get help. It's hard to get support. Our school system is not designed to welcome support. We have to get the correct answer on our own in this system we live in. However, we know that support actually enhances our experience. Getting support makes us stronger helps us function better. All right, so however we want to, we can safely, carefully press up to stand. And let's have a careful seat. Okay, next up, one of my favorite ways to use um, props, especially pillows. If you joined us late and you haven't gotten the clue, we're using props today, really exploring stress relief, anxiety relief, tension relief. Um, and if you could grab one or two blankets, some pillows, some sofa cushions, um, if you have any yoga props like a bolster, that would be great, but not necessary at all. Um, so here, make a stack of pillows in front of us. We can open up for a straddle, maybe flex and point on both sides. Now, we're all gonna have really different hip flexibility here. So some of us might want a stack here. We might wanna also lean into a bolster like this or have many, many pillows. We wanna be able to lean our chest against something, okay? So whatever we have to do to create a stack where we can flex these feet to keep them engaged, protecting the calves, protecting the Achilles, protecting the hamstrings, we're flexing, engaging with our strength to protect our body. Um, but then we can also just start to lean our chest forward and rest here. We might be right here. We might be right here. Wherever we are is fine. It's okay for your back to be rounded. Find what works for you. And we'll breathe here for a good long while. So if it starts to be like, oh, this is intense, add another pillow, roll up a blanket to add some more cushion. Bring the earth to your body, bring the earth closer to your body to support your body. Um, and after a while, it might start to feel super comfortable and you might wanna go a little bit deeper and that's okay too. So breathe here, focusing on long, slow, deep breaths. We can also use a visualization strategy um, to imagine our inhale moving through our body and filling up our tight, tense, sore spots um, like balloons. So identifying where we're feeling tension, probably in our outer hips, um, inhaling to feel our breath move through our body, feel our hips actually expand. We can do that. We can make our hips, we can make our outer hips inflate, we can open and flare open these hips and exhale to release them let them feel heavy in the floor let your outer hips melt so inhaling to fill your tense spark your, your tense body parts with 
air inflating like a balloon exhale to release to to deflate to feel heavy feeling heavier with every exhale noticing this feeling of having support holding you up and hopefully feeling like you could go a little bit deeper than you would if you didn't have the support there The support is not a sign of weakness. It's an asset. We all need support. I would not be waking up and doing yoga by myself if it wasn't for this community. So I need support too. We all we are here together practicing online because we value support, the support of community, because we value the support of each other. few more breaths here noticing what thoughts are coming up are we like man this is not what I expected this is too long this is boring like I like to move or we what are, what's coming up for us are we like oh this feels amazing or I haven't slowed down like this in a few days noticing what it feels like to really sink in noticing what it feels like to really pursue depth Noticing what it feels like to have the support to stay here, to lean in. Gently pressing up when you're ready. Um, okay, so next up, um, I wanna take us to the floor um, well, we're already on the floor, but <laughs> closer to the floor, um, for a restorative fish. Um, so I'm going to use a bolster. You could use a stack of pillows. You could use multiple cushions. Um, and whatever works for you here, uh, we're going to sit so that our lower back is right up against this pillow or bolster. I even have a blanket handy. I'm even just going to put this blanket over my lap because it's nice to have this cozy comfort and then I'm gonna roll back resting on this cushion my hips are still on the floor can we see yes my hips are still on the floor my spine is so supported right now and play with your levels adjust what feels nice if this is feeling really intense See if you can f position and make adjustments so that it feels less intense. We can do a few things with our legs. We can elevate the legs, or we can plant the feet and, and lean the knees into each other like constructive rest. Um, we can elevate with another pillow and just let the knees kind of rest or the thighs rest on the pillow. I guess I should remove the blanket so y'all can see. Um, and then we can also do a little butterfly, so pressing the bottoms of the feet into each other, and then we can put these um, pillows under our knees, like so. And then personally, I love putting something on my pelvis. I love putting something here for comfort, a pillow, a rolled up blanket. So let's rest here and restorative fish. Do what feels like we're minimizing work. But that's the invitation. Of course, maybe you're maybe you're fully wrapped up in a snuggie, eating Lucky Charms on a Saturday morning, drinking a glass of wine on a Saturday morning. That is great. Maybe you're dancing um, and just watching us. Maybe you're cooking and watching us. It's all good. There are so many ways to show up to this practice. These are just invitations. Slowing the breath down once more. Long inhales, slow controlled exhales. Really letting those hips sink into the floor with every exhale. Really letting the shoulders melt heavy with every exhale. Long, deep breaths.
few more slow, deep breaths. Let the hips release with every exhale. Let the spine feel heavy. Let the head feel heavy. Gently coming back to center, adjusting the legs. Um, next up, I'm going to have us take this bolster out or this pillow out so that we can lay flat on the floor for a moment. And I'd love to give us a psoas release. Here's our psoas, our hip flexors. I'm going to take one of my other pillows and cushions. I'm going to press my feet into the floor and slide this cushion underneath my hips and lower back. And maybe it's just a little bit, maybe it's a lot. And I'm gonna stretch my legs long. So when I do this, you'll notice we're elevating the hips so that our hip flexors, it's almost like doing a back bend or almost like doing the camel pose where we open up our hip flexors. But now we're doing it with restoration we can put another pillow on top of our pelvis for some weight. But here we're just really gently opening up the psoas and we're using gravity. So it's, it's really like a release to let our hips sink heavy, let our spine feel heavy, let the feet lengthen, feeling heavy here. And we'll just breathe here. So really gentle, easy postures to relieve tension in the body. And we know from embodied practice, from the lineage of these designed postures and, and from modern study on the benefits of physical practice, we know that these postures are healthy for us to, to cope with stress, to cope with anxiety and depression. Um, I wrote in my journal the other day, like, if you're feeling depressed, you might as well grab some pillows and, like, elevate your hips and be depressed on the floor <laughs> in a yoga position. And, and that was, like, kind of a nice thing for me to embrace in this time of being home. It was, like, it's okay to actually feel like a lazy, depressed lump sometimes, like, but how can we actually make that a healthy experience of slowing down? Um... And sometimes it's as simple as just grabbing a pillow and, and tugging it or grabbing a pillow and putting it under our hips. And then it feels different to practice restoration. We're mentally activating self-care in that way, which is so powerful. All right. Let's bend the knees, plant the feet. Pressing the hips up, sliding this block out from underneath us. Great. And um, there are so many other supportive things we can do for our body. And I think I'd love to continue this pattern of doing support flows where we really learn how to use props and go into some relaxing postures. But next, I would love to give us a long Shavasana. Um, and I'd love to teach us some options for how to how to make Shavasana even more restorative and relaxing. Um, so feel free to give your body anything else it needs. Um, of course, in a, in a normal Shavasana, or not normal, but the way we often see Shavasana is just lying on, the lying on our backs, lying on the floor right here. There's some things we can do here to bring more comfort. So let's first notice in Shavasana how does our lower back feel? How does our middle back feel? Just taking a blanket, it doesn't even have to be, you know, neat, um, neatly folded. I'm just stuffing it under my middle back to give a little bit, I was feeling a little bit of strain there. So I'm just putting my blanket there so that the earth is coming closer to my body. My middle back feels supported so it can rest. It doesn't have to feel like I'm holding myself in this place, um, this uncomfortable place. So, okay, so I've added some support. We can add some support to our lower back. 
Um, another thing we can do for our head, so we don't want to put a full pillow under our head because um, that will add some com some compression in our spine. But what we can do is roll up a blanket and then we can place that so that our neck is resting on this rolled up part. So I have a little, like some little elevation with this blanket right here, but I also, oops, I put it too far down. So I've rolled up this blanket and put it under my neck. So even my neck feels supported right now. So like normally there'd be some space between my neck and the floor and I'm filling that space with support so that my neck is resting. My cervical spine is all resting. So every part of my body from the head down to the hips right now are connected to the earth in some way. Um, so our legs, we can, um, of course, we can just let the legs flop out and maybe that feels great. Elevating um, the legs can also feel really great. So one, we could put them on a, on a chair or on a wall um, on the edge of our bed. This elevation will feel really, really nice because the gravity will kind of let our hips sink into the floor even more. Um, we can put a bolster or a stack of pillows or a stack of sofa cushions under our knees. Um, this can feel really great. If we want to elevate in our calves, we can elevate the calves like this. Um, if we want to create a little stack, we can put a stack, you know, several pillows up. Again, you can be as high as right here, as high as right here, with your the gravity really pushing into the hips, letting the hips sink into the floor. Um, even this elevation of the knees lets our hips and our lower back sink into the floor even more. Um, so again, or not again, I don't have a third blanket with me right now, but putting a blanket over yourself in Shavasana, tucking yourself in feels really nice. And then the last thing that we can do for us, not the last thing, but another thing we can do for ourselves is, so normally when I'm laying down, um, my, my pinkies rest on the floor. And so there's a little bit of slight inward rotation in my shoulders. Um, if I grab some pillows and I place them on my thumbs, then I'm actually allowing for some outer rotation in the shoulders, which just kind of helps my shoulders feel even heavier on the floor. So just having this really gentle weight on um, my thumb, on my thumb joint, is helping my shoulders slightly rotate. All right, so making any adjustments we need for this nice extended Shavasana. I always like to recommend at least seven minutes for Shavasana, but you know, a true Shavasana where you really go through all the phases of relaxation, the physical relaxation, then the sensory relaxation, and then the mental relaxation. If I really want, if I'm really feeling anxious, if I'm really feeling stressed, I'll give myself 20 to 30 minutes to go through those phases because it does take our body time to get into that rest and digest mode. Seven minutes can do the trick. Um, seven minutes can help for sure. I think that would be the minimum I would rest in Shavasana, um, but 10 minutes is my usual. And when I feel like I wanna treat myself, 20 to 30 minutes is a great amount of time to really go through all the phases of relaxation in our body. So we'll be here for a few moments Maybe Shavasana is tough for some of us. Many say that Shavasana is the hardest of all the yoga poses. You know, again, our school system does not educate us to slow down and listen to our body. It educates us to push through, to push through how we're feeling so that we can produce on schedule, on time. So taking this time to pause and do nothing, to actually minimize the work, so, so much of our lives are designed around efficiency, and here, we're trying to do nothing. We're trying to do as little as we possibly can. So, this is really, I think, Shavasana is a protest against our factory industrial complex.
Letting the ankles rest heavy, letting the knees feel heavy. Let the hips release into the floor, let the spine rest. Let the shoulders melt heavy. Elbows, all of our knuckles relaxing. Relax the jaw. Relax the cheekbones. Relax the eyelids. Relax the eyebrows and the forehead. Invite us to pay attention to our heartbeat, noticing if we can be mindful of our heartbeats. Can we feel it? Can we hear it? At the least, can we trust it's there? Can we trust that our heartbeat is working for us? Can we feel our heart pulsing? throughout our body. Can we feel our body's heartbeat pulsing into the floor, into the earth? And in this space of isolation and distance, can we feel our heartbeat pulsing into the earth Together, can we feel our heartbeats pulsing into this one earth that we are all sharing? We are all in this space together. Can we feel those vibrations? Can we trust those vibrations are there, connecting us through the earth? These past few weeks have really demonstrated how connected we really are as humans. Let's embrace that connection. For those of us practicing together live, for those of us practicing later, we see you, we feel you. For those of us not practicing who are like, I'm not going to do yoga, that's silly. <laughs> we feel you too. We feel your heartbeat pulsing into the earth here with us. For the loved ones, our co-workers, our students, our families that we're not able to share space with, we feel your heartbeat pulsing here with us into the earth. Wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Bring our attention back to our bodies on this floor, in our homes, 
on this virtual community yoga, Kudara Goddess yoga practice. I'll invite us to take three sighs of relief, breathing in. Ah, nice, loud, audible sigh, breathing in. Ah. One more time, breathing in. Let it all out, y'all. Ah. Now you can feel free to stay here as long as you like. If you're ready, we can roll over to our right side, curling up in the fetal position. And I'll also say, it feels really nice to stick a pillow between the knees, between the thighs here. And just find a moment of comfort here for yourself in the fetal position. The fetal pose, especially with this pillow, maybe we're even hugging another pillow. Such a great space to be in, to reduce anxiety, to calm ourselves to restore, to digest, to give our body space to just be, to function, to balance. And when you're ready, some of us might still be in Shavasana, that's okay. You can stay there as long as you like. Let's meet in a comfortable seat. Maybe we're seeing sunshine outside. Maybe, maybe it's not so cute to go outside, but we can appreciate the open space, the wide open space of outside. I'll encourage us to go take a breath outside, even if it's cold, even if it's rainy. Finding length in the spine, shoulders open, chest open, wrists resting the knees or bringing the hands to heart center maybe resting the hands over the heartbeat a breath for the ancestors we bring to our space and for the indigenous people who are on our land before colonization breathing in and out a breath to thank yourself for your practice today breathing in and out breath to appreciate others and our and our supportive props and the and the people that made these props happen, made them exist and come to us, breathing in and out. A breath for the intentions and well-being of everyone in this community we're building together, breathing in and out. Loving human in me bows down to the loving human in you. Namaste. Ha! Ah, well, thank you for waking up to practice with me. Thank you for experimenting with something a little slower. Um, and hopefully, we have some new insights to feel supported um, and to activate our parasympathetic nervous system to take us out of our trigger trauma stress response our crisis response which is useful for survival is necessary for survival and also allowing our body to have some space to um, function in a healthy state um, bringing our anxiety down bringing our stress levels um, bringing our stress response to a place of confidence to trust our body to get us through this um, so thank you so much. This is also, we're doing these classes because it's important uh, to practice together it, um, and also to raise money, um, to raise funds for queer trans POC families in need. Um, many of my students, uh, many of my friends um, and many folks, queer trans families here in Providence um, are struggling and this is a space where we can take care of ourselves and we can also take care of other people. So I encourage you to send me a cash app or Venmo donation. I'm not keeping any donations for myself. They're all going into households, making sure families have groceries, making sure elderly queer folks, elderly POC folks um, have groceries and have their prescriptions and medicines and 
So uh, shoot me a message. My Venmo is Matthew R. Garza. My Cash App is Garza Smash. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, I haven't done a slow, really restorative flow um, virtually with this yet. So let me know what you thought. Um, and if you have any particular tension or you have any yoga questions, send me a picture, send me a video. I'd love to answer your questions. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Get some sun. Take a breath outside. Um, send me a message or write in the comments to let me know what you thought today. Um, and take care. Sending you love.